Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Yemi, Nedarim Daf Yed Gimel. Yesterday we left off with the following question. A fellow would like to produce a nether by using a reference. He's referring to another item which he would like to use as a basis for his new nether. The thing is that that other item happens to be currently in a state of heter, it's mutter. But in the past, used to be asr. How do we view his words? You're making reference to an item which is now mutter but was asr. Shall we say, be karika matvis. He's trying to be matvis, he's trying to relate, to connect to that item in its original form, in which case it was asr. Or shall we say, he is referring to that item in its current state, in which case it's something which is mutter, you can't connect to that, you can't use that as a source, as a basis for producing an nether. So that was the question. Says the Gemara, perhaps this very question is a machlikis tanoi. So let's go back a bit to Yud Beis Amit Beis, five lines from the bottom. Lema katanoi, perhaps we can propose that there is a machlikis tanoi in this regard. Do we look at current state or original state? He points to a piece of meat. This to me will be like a bechar. A bechar is something kachim, something which is uh, asr. And it's also a davar hanodr. Because to use a precedent, to use something for atfasa as a source and basis for another, two conditions must be met. Firstly, it needs to be something which is asr. And secondly, a davar hanodr whose isr came about through a nether, through a commitment, through a verbalization. A bachara would seem to match both criteria. So he's using that as his atfas. What is the Allah? Rabbi Yaakov Aysar, he says, you've created a nether based on the bachar. Rabbi Yehuda Matar says, no, you have not created a nether based on the bachar. Hey, Chidami, what exactly did he say? He named it, did he say, I'm treating this piece of meat, this piece of bread, like a Bechur in a pre-Zrika state, in which case it's still within the nether realm. Pre-Zrika, Zrika is still Asr to anybody. Right? Until you sprinkle a dam on the Mizbech, the, the carbon is Asr Bachilu. If that's the case, if he's making direct reference to the carbon in its pre zrika state, my time at the Mandashari, why would anybody not consider this a proper nether? Why would they be moderate? If he's making direct reference to a Bechar in its post zrika state, in which case it's Mutar Bachila, well then it's no longer a nether. It's no longer a nether, nether related item. The nether is no longer active in that carbon, my time at the Mandashari. Why would anybody consider this a nether? Why would Rabbi Yaakov make this asr? So if there was explicit verbalization, there's no, there's no shayla, there's no question as to what he meant. El Olav apparently was speaking that it's not really so defined. is basar b'chur kameh. There's a piece of b'chur meat in front of him, a b'chur after Zerika. So technically, it's right now mutter, it's no longer a nether related item. But in its past history, it was something which was Asr Mishim Neder. Umachis Basar Daheich Kabeh. And there's another slab of Basar next to it. And all he said was, Vamar Zekazeh, I'm treating this like this. Like this. Oh, let's analyze the Bukhar. Currently it's Mutter, but in the past it was Asr. And that's the Machlekes. What was his point of reference? Present or past? The Tanoi, the Machlek is Tanoim, is based on our question. Loi says the Gemara de Kuliyam by Lefnei Zrikastam. No. Perhaps we are specifically referencing a Bechar before Zrika, in which case its nether act, aspect is still active. It's still a Dover Hanadur. If so, why would anybody make it mutter? 
Why isn't this considered a proper nether? Oh my time of the man Shari, why would Rabbi Yudah say it's mutter a makro the pasak says ki yidar? Kidar nether. How do we produce a nether? By referencing another item which is a davar hanother. Ach yidar, but davar nother. You have to base your new nether on something which is another, produced by nether. As opposed to Bechur, which is a natural phenomenon. He's born K- Kaddish. His holiness is, is God-given, Torah-given. You haven't really made it into a Bechur. In contrast to an Oila or Shlamim, which you volunteer and you produce by way of nether. La Fuki Bechur as opposed to Bechur, the topic of our conversation. The Dabar HaAsru. It's simply Asr. Through the Torah. The Halacha made it Asr. Not me. All my words. And therefore, Rabbi Yehuda does not consider this a valid precedent or basis or source for a further nether. Uman da asr. What about the Rabbi Yaakov who says it is asr? Why? Amar Kro the Pasuk says, Ki yudha nether la Hashem. The word la Hashem is la rabbi's davar asr coming to add this form of Hatfasa. So even though it's a natural Kedusha, it's Davar Asr by itself, it still qualifies as a basis for further Nadarm. But the, uh, the Ran and the other Rishonim point out, of course, we're not suggesting that one can use any Asr item as a precedent for another. It needs to be Davar another rather. Rabbi Yaakov will contend that even a Bukhar has a nether element to him, as we're going to see soon, because after all, you're meant to call it Bukhar, meant to verbally express the Hegdish. Even though it's already Kaddish, you're meant to add another layer of Hegdish by personal verbalization. So that added measure of uh, Kedusha that you add through your words are sufficient to grant it the status of Dabar HaNadr. So that's Rabbi Yaakov Shit. Uman the Shari, Rabbi Yehuda, who says a Bukhar does not qualify. La Hashem, What does he do with the extra word La Hashem? What is it coming to include? Mi He needs it for the following. Lematvis Bechatas Va'ashem. He uses a Chatas, a carbon Ashem, as a precedent for his new nether. So the Chiddush is, even though these are obligatory karbani, says the Ran. You must bring those karbani. They're not just donations. So why is it Dava another? Answers the Ran. Bottom line is, you chose the animal. In contrast to a Bechur. Well, you have no choice in the matter. Firstborn is, is a Kaddish. Here, you go to the store, you go to your herd, and you pick a specific animal, and you're Magdashit for your Chantas, for your Ashim. And therefore, it qualifies as a Dover Hanad. Umar Rois, now why did you choose to prefer Chatas over Bukhar? The Rabbis Chatas for Asham to include them in this category of Dover Hanad. Uloi says a Bukhar and to disqualify the Bukhar, who you do not consider Dover Hanad. Very simple. Marbani Chatas for Asham. I would prefer including them. Shumat Fi Sai Ben Nether. Chain it Fasan Ben Nether. Because after all, you have to. Make it Kaddish. You pick, you choose it, you single it out, you earmark it, you designate it, you make it Kaddish. Even though it's to accommodate your Chiyah. But after all, this specific animal is becoming Kaddish because of you. Umoitziani, as a Bukhar, as opposed to Bukhar, Shu Kaddish Me'imai, who's born Kaddish. And therefore doesn't qualify. Umada Asa. What does the other sheet hold? Why does Bukhar qualify? Bukhar Nami Matfisa Benedru, even Bukhar is considered. Something brought about and produced through a nether because the San Yomashum Rabbi Amru. It was said in the name of Rabbi. How do we know that when one finds a Bukhar born in his herd, he's meant to add Kedusha and say it's Kaddish. He's meant to personally designate it as a Bukhar. You're meant to be Magdish the Bukhar. So there's a nether element here as well, and therefore it qualifies as a Dovar Hanodur. Uman the Shari, the other Shita who says, no, you can't use it. It's Mutter. If one shall use a Bechayr for a nether, 
What do you mean? Aren't you supposed to be Magdash? Why isn't it a Dabar Hanadar? Kiloi Magdish, Lay Milay Migdish? Well, true. It's better to be Makadish the Bukhar. Suppose he fails to do so. Kiloi Magdish, Lay Milay Migdish. Don't you think it becomes Kadish by itself? Of course it does. So it's inherent Kadusha is natural. From birth. And therefore, it's not considered a Dabar Hanadar. Because the actual Kadusha comes about on its own. So bottom line is we have three categories. We have the more easily understood Dabar Hanadar, which is a Ayla, a Shlom, in which you sort of offer and volunteer. Of course, that's a Dabar Hanadar and can be used as a precedent, as a source and basis for a further nether. This is like the Ayla, it counts. In the middle stage, we have the Chatas Va'ashem who are triggered by a chayva, an obligation, but the actual manifestation of that chayva on this animal is a personal expression. It's a personal choice. So that too is considered davar another and qualifies for atfas. At the top we have the bukhar, which is naturally kaddish. Says Rabbi Yuda, that's no davar another. Rabbi Yaakov disagrees. There's a mitzvah to add kedusha by way of being magdash bepeh, and that qualifies as a Dover Hamad. Ki Imro Kadir, Tana, we learned on a price. So, first, a person would like to impose a nether upon himself, have a loaf of bread be usher on him, by way of comparison, by way of hat fuss. He says, Look, Imra, a sheep, presumably a sheep of carbon, Limra, like a sheep. Kimra, another way of saying, like a sheep. Or he's speaking about the, the pen, the animal pen, where they keep the sheep of Karbonis. Dirim, Lidirim, like the dirim, Kidirim. Or the Eitzim of the Mizbeach, Leitzim, Keitzim. So we have three forms of expression, the actual word, or he added a prefix, either a lama or a kaf. Trying to use that as an example. Sort of a source, a basis, to match up what he's holding in his hand. This should be like the Eitzim, like the Keitzim, Leitz, or Ishim, the fires in the Mizbech, Leishim, Kishim, or Mizbech, Le Mizbech, Mizbech, or Hechel, Leichel, Kehechel, Yerushalayim, Le Yerushalayim, Kirushalayim. In all these expressions, Kula, all depends. What did he say afterwards? Imra, that what? She'oichalach, regarding that food which I can partake from you, it should be considered imra. Basically, I don't want your food. Oh, sir. That constitutes a nether. So, imra sha'ichalach, le imra sha'ichalach, ki imra sha'ichalach, and so on and so forth. So, if you end it in a positive sense, sha'ichalach, that which I would eat from you, that makes an isr. But if he ends in a negative tone, he says, let's say, imra, Imra that I will not eat from you. Well, uh, that's muta. Because he hasn't really said anything. An Imra which I will not eat from you? What about... What about uh, things that I would eat from you? <laughs> We're not sure how to treat that, right? So, there's no... Uh, there's no nether here. Okay. So having learned the price, let's analyze the price. Man shamine Whose opinion is this? The loy shamine Which man the armor? Which author does not differentiate between whether you added the, the chaf, the kaf before the word, the comparative, you know, uh, note, or even without that note. It has the same meaning, the same ramifications regarding nedarim. The Lishanile makes no difference to him whether he said Imra, the sheep, or Le Imra, like the sheep, Kimra. Who's that? Who's that speaking? Rabbi Meir, it's Rabbi Meir, who argues with Rabbi Yudah, who told us on the Yudah Medbez, you need the cuff. Rabbi Yudah says when it comes to, let's say, Yerushalayim or all these things, you have to say Kir Yerushalayim, otherwise it doesn't mean much. Our Tana is not concerned with the cuff. With or without, it means the same. That's Rabbi Meir, 
the Bar Plukta Yerbuda's opponent, a Masefa. If that's the case, let's move on to the next halach in that price, the Kulan, with, with regarding all these references, all these terms of Imra, etc. Loy Eichalach Mutter. He says, Imra, Loy Eichalach. It's okay. But according to Rab Meir, it's not okay. Vatanan. We have a Mishnah coming up in a minute. A fellow gets up and says, Likarban Loy Eichalach. What happens then? Rab Meir Oyser. He says, You've just made it to us by saying, Likarban. To a carbon, like a carbon, lo I will not eat your food. How is that uh, creating a, a nether? It's just uh, cryptic words. I'll tell you how. It's not like it's not like he said la carbon lo You see. The Gemara thought he said la carbon lo yechalach. La can mean no, no carbon, that which I will not have from you. It's a double negative, which of course does not work, especially according to the mayor. We had this the other day. We don't imply. You have to speak straight. So why do we say in this case it's asr? Vamra ba'ab, I'll tell you why. Nasa ko'imer le carbon yehei lefichach lo yechalach. So first of all, we're speaking that he didn't say la, he said le. Secondly, we sort of insert an interpretation. Le carbon means it should be like a carbon. Your food to me is like a carbon. Stop, put a comma. The words lo yechalach were meant like this. That's why I can't have your food. It's sort of an explanation on the first part of the sentence. Le carbon ye hate. Your food should be to me like a carbon. Le fichach lo yechalach. That's why I can't partake in your food. Having said that, Reb Meir even agrees that this would make it asr. So, in our cases as well, he says, "Le'imra lo yechalach." Why are you telling me it's okay? Le'imra, it should be like imra, and therefore I can't have your food. Like Kasha, the answer is well, it all depends on your spelling. Hada Amar la imra. So some take out the lo. It's um. La or le? Hadamar la imra, a non imra, and therefore I will not eat. That doesn't that doesn't have much meaning in mir. What I will not eat will be a non imra. Well, that means what I will will be a kevis. Well, that's just implication. The kuntra mir doesn't work. Hadamar la imra. The case where it is asr, where we do treat it as a nether, that's because he says le imra or le carbon or le mizbeach with a shva which would indicate that your food to me is limra, is treated like that, like a kevas, like hegdish. And the conclusion, lo yechalach, is simply explaining and elaborating. And therefore, I can't have your food. So a big difference between la and le. So bottom line is, we made reference to the machlekes between Rabbi and Rabbi whether a cuff is necessary. Contra Rabbi Yudah, yes, or contra Rabbi no. And we explained that in order to get this formula working, the Lefirach formula, you have to say it with a lit. It is this, and therefore I will not have your food. Continues the Mishnah. Once again, it will make, make reference to the Machlekes, whether or not the prefix kaf is necessary. Ha'im carbon, he says. You know, uh, your food to me is like a carbon. Or he says, Eilo, or he says, Mincha, or Chatas, or Toide, or Shlamim. Shani Eichalach, that which I, you know, can partake from you. Meaning your food to me is like, you know, this or that. That's a form of nether. Us. Rabbi the matter because he says, unless you added that chaf, it doesn't work. Concludes the Mishnah. If he says, ha carbon, your food to me is like a carbon. Ke carbon. Carbon. Shaykhalach. Your food to me, the food which I can theoretically partake, the food, uh, your food, which I can eat, that to me is either ha carbon or ke carbon or carbon. Asr. These are various forms of nether. And then we conclude the halacha that we had before. Even sometimes in a negative way it can work. Like the carbon. It should be like a carbon. And therefore, lo yechalach, I can't partake in your food. In this case, you're mere oyster, like you explained before. 
Says the Gemara. Let's go back to uh, the uh, second to the last halach. Ketani, it says, Korban or ha Korban, or Ke Korban, which is concluded with Sha'i Halach, also, that creates a nether. Stama, Tana Karmir. So the um, anonymous mission here, even though it's nameless, apparently it's Reb Meir, meaning Reb Yudah's disputant. The Lishani Leibin, Imra, the Imra, Tim makes no difference whether you had the, 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 you know, the Lamed or the Chaf. It's enough of a direct reference to something which is a Hegdish, which is us. Having said that, uh, we, we don't understand the other Allah. Ira Meir, if it's Reb Meir speaking, Let's go back to the first of the three examples. Ha korban shaychalach asr, right? That which I can have from you is is a korban, therefore it's asr. Really, Vatanya. We have a price. Moidim chachamim l'rabiuda. All agree to rabiuda. In the following case, that it is not a nether. Ba'imar ha korban. V'ha oila. V'ha mencha. So he's referring to his friend's food and he says, Hakarban. That which I can partake from you is a carb, is a ha carbon. Ha mutter. In all these cases it's mutter. You know why? Shloy nadar ze elabachai carbon. We're concerned that when he said ha carbon, it's like sort of a declaration. Ha carbon. Wow. Behold, the carbon, the life of the carbon, the absolute existence of the carbon, the life force that's enlivening the carbon. I'm pegging my commitment on that. He's using that sort of as a reinforcement of his commitment. It's almost like a shvur. He's committing himself in it with the absoluteness of the life force within that carbon. That... Uh, you know, uh, he's going to keep away from the other fellow's food. That doesn't work. Because life is not Dabar Hanadar. So it's Mutter. Shaloy Nadar is the carbon. He's referencing the life of the carbon. So why is it that in our Mishnah we seem to say otherwise? Ha carbon, right? Carbon with that prefix He. Shaloy Chalach is a Nadar. Ha carbon, maybe that's a reference to the absoluteness, the existence of the carbon. Doesn't qualify as a dover hanadu to serve as a precedent for another. Like Kasha, the answer is depends how elaborate he is in his declarations. Ha da amar ha karban. He says ha karban. Ah, that's a declaration of absoluteness relating to the life of the carbon. The existence of the carbon is my precedent. That's not another. Ha da amar ha karban. But a simple hey prefix that doesn't constitute. And therefore, we interpret it as a simple reference to the carbon. The carbon, the same status of the carbon, will will have you know what I partake from you. So hadamar ha carbon, vadamar ha carbon. My timer. What's wrong with ha carbon? Chaye carbon kamar. He's referring to the life of the carbon, but uh, just uh, a lame expression like ha carbon with just a prefix, that doesn't sound the same. Okay, let's move on to the next halacha, the Mishnah, which we already actually explained before. Katani la carbon la echalach. That's a conclusion of the Mishnah. And the Gemara figures at this point it was la carbon la echalach. It will not be a carbon. What will not be a carbon? That which I will not have from you. A double negative, in, indicating that uh, that which I will take from you is a carbon. La carbon la yichlach. What is the Allah? Rameir oisa. What do you mean? According to Rameir, we don't derive implications to making a dharm. Well, lastly, the Rameir michlal lava tashemei hain. Rameir doesn't hold of extracting a a hain from a lav. To extract a hain, meaning a positive from a negative. So why is it also Amar Abba? Like we said before, nasa kaima. We treat it as though he says. As follows. We split it into two parts. Le carbon yehi. It should be a carbon. And therefore, sorry, I can't join you for dinner. Okay, let's perhaps do a quick uh, 
summary of all the uh, forms of expression that we've discussed today. So let's just pick, you know, carbon to keep it uh, simple and streamlined. But the same idea would apply to uh, most most of the time would apply to any other, you know, point of reference like ishim is beach and eitzim. Let's just keep it simple. We'll focus on the word carbon. Of course, there are two um, forms of expression: positive shayich alach, making a positive reference to the other fellow's food, or layich alach, a negative uh, reference, explaining you know, why you can't partake in that fellow's food. Okay? So we have five or six variations. The first, uh, s- rather simple one, is kikarban. Kikarban sha'ichalach. Okay? Your food to me is also like a kikarban. Pretty simple. But kikarban lo'yaychalach, that has no meaning, and it's mutter. Right? What I will not take from you is a carbon That doesn't uh, create in it. He says... Carbon, or ha carbon. So he didn't actually add the chaf. According to Abuda, it's okay. That's not another. According to Rameir, it's asr. In both instances, if he ends off with a negative, it's it's not another. Ha carbon is always mutter, whether it's shayichalach, even shleichalach. It's mutter because it's bechayi carbon. What about le carbon? Le carbon shayichalach, of course, is asr. The carbon loyechalach, that's the chiddush of Rameh that we just had. We split the sentence into two. It's going to be a carbon, the carbon yehei, and there for loyechalach. La carbon, which is like a no, it won't be a carbon, shoyechalach. Your food to me is not a carbon, of course it's mutter. What about a double negative? La carbon, it is not a carbon, loyechalach, that which I will not take from you, according to Rameh, it's mutter. We don't extract an adharam from his words, or contra it would be also because the implication is that is that which I will partake from you will be also to me, like a carbon, and therefore it's a net. Continues the mission. Hayvul Khaveri Ruven turns to Shimon Kainam, this is a lotion of carbon, of nether. I'm making it off limits to you. Pimadabi imcha. My mouth can't speak with you. Yadi Aisa Imach. My hands can't do anything for you. Ragli. My hand, my foot, cannot walk with you. Asr. He landed in it. He can't converse, do or walk with a fellow. Viraminu, we have a kasha. How can you make a nether on an activity? An activity isn't something tangible. Remember, a nether has to apply itself to a cheft. It's something tangible. Viraminu, we have a a Mishnah later on, which sort of characterizes Shvois versus Nadarm. Chaymer be Shvois, Mimir Nadarm. We find stringencies by a Shvua not found by a Nadarm. Uber Nadarm be Shvois. And likewise, we find stringencies by Nadarm not found by Shvois. They're totally different tracks. Chaymer be Nadarm. What's special about a Nadarm? In which ways a Nadarm is sort of more powerful? Shanadarm Cholon al Hamitzvah. You can even land a nether on something which is a mitzvah. This sukkah is asr for me. This lulav is asr for me. You can do it on something which is a mitzvah, just as something which is a non-mitzvah, as opposed to shvois, where it doesn't work. Mashiach can be shvois. You can't commit to doing something against the Torah. I think more later we'll go into this, you know, the whys and the whats. Likewise, and this pertains to our Gemara, the chaymer be shvois, we find something that shvo has above nether, a shvo can be applied to something which is tangible, and even something which is not tangible. You can make a shvo to sleep, not to sleep, to speak, not to speak. Because shvo is personal. It's a personal commitment to do or not to do. He's committing himself, his body, his person, to do or not to do. Masha'inkim benadarm benadarm don't work like that. Another has to relate to an item, usage, benefiting from something. So when he speaks about, you know, making his speech usher, his doing, his walking, these aren't tangible things, they're activities. How do they work? Amr of Yudah. But anyway, we interpret what he said as follows. He's referencing a specific limb in his body, which produces that activity. And that's tangible. The limb is tangible. But Amr, you usher pila 
with respect to you, my friend, my mouth should be usher to express words. Yodi saying, my hand should be usher pertaining to their expression, to their deeds. Ragla, Lucha, my feet should be usher pertaining to their activity. So he's addressing the source of that activity, the limb, the aver, which is something tangible, and that works, even for another. They cannot be, in fact, the wording in the mission indicates as such. He wasn't simply referencing something intangible, activities, no. He made direct reference to the limb that produces the, that conversation. And that's the by Mavish, which can handle another, which can accept another. But like Tony, rather than saying, my speaking with you is awesome. Now, that wouldn't work. Because my means me as a person. A person does activities. A person on a whole creates action. He produces activity. He, 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 he does mass. He does pu'ulois. And a pu'ula, the act, the activity, is intangible. Rather, he references a specific limb, which the body sort of uses to create that activity, to generate the talk, to generate the walk. That limb is Dabar Shiyesh Mamish. And he can apply nether to that idea, to that location. Hadran Lakil Kinuyi says the mission of Eilu Mutar, in contrast to the previous parak, where we discussed in great length various forms of Nidre Isr, which work. Here we have cases where <laughs> it's a failed expression, it doesn't produce a nether. Chulun Shoichalach, that which I eat from you is Chulun, is okay. Well, Obviously, that's not another. The Gemara will explain why we have it in the mission. Or, he's going to make reference to items which are usr and use them as a basis, as a source for his current nether, which he's trying to produce. Problem is, they don't qualify. They're not davar ha Those things were not generated through expression. Kavasa chazir. This food should be like chazir. That's just usr. It's not nadr. Kavay dis kechavim. Kavay dis zara. See, even though it's also Asr Bahana, it's a higher form of Isr, still doesn't qualify for Nether. Karis Levuvin. The Goyim used to offer this to the Avoid Zara as like a sort of a Krava. They used to bore out the, the heart of the animal while it's alive. So that is even more stringent because Rashi says, Rashi says it can't become nullified, it can't become bottled. Still, it doesn't qualify for a Nether source. Can avail us a Trefais? Animal that died, animal that internal wound. These things are asr, and they're even a, a, a nevela is metame. Doesn't matter. Kishkatsim are small types of creatures, which have even a, a more stringent form of tumor. You can't use these as precedents for an adarim. Kechalas iron trumasai the dough given to iron as chala, or truma given to iron, meaning iron and his descendants. We pick iron because he was the first. These aren't considered davar hanado, even though actually. You uh, generate these things through verbalization, the Ran asks, but it's not called Dabar Hanada because we explained this yesterday. Truma and Chala are, um, are not really also to Kayhanim, so even though Yisraelim can't take, uh, partake in it, but that's not because of the nether. fact is, you didn't, when you made the thing Truma, you didn't specify, well, it's Asr to him and Mutter to him, so how did it get that, you know, Halacha? Apparently, the Torah gives it the Halacha. It's not your nether creating that, uh, that concept. The, Ru- the Rush actually said a, uh, another point. He says, you're not creating truma. Truma was already there and potentially just be a varer. You're just choosing it, just sort of separating it from the rest of the uh, bunch. In any case, these are not davar hanadar, and therefore using any of these as catalysts for a new nether don't work. Hare zemot. Haimel ishta, a fellow turns to his wife in a moment of fit, Harayat Allah, I'm treating you, meaning you are you are considered to me ki'ima like my mother. You're off limits. So here as well, he's referencing something which is totally usr, a mother. It's not a davar another, but still, we don't don't take it lightly. In this case, the round brings if he's an amaretz, and we don't want him to get you know too involved in these expressions. So we sort of make it a bit difficult. We pretend, so to speak, that it's a real nether. We'll address it. We'll try to accommodate him and help him revoke the nether, but we'll give him sort of a runaround. We'll try to find a doorway, an opening, 
some way to extract a regret, which is a standard procedure when nullifying a nether, will make him go through the formal official procedure and mimokim achar. Rather than just saying, well, is it covered to use your mother in this context? We don't do that. That will make it very easy for him. Rather, we try to find another source of regret, another reason to nullify. Why? What's the point? To hopefully discourage him from taking these things lightly so we make it a bit more difficult for him. Okay, Reza Hashem will see the Gemara tomorrow. Let's just recap today's daf. We began with that question of the Ikara or Behetera. You have an item which is now Muta, but was Asr. When you make reference, is it the current item or in its original state? We thought we had a Machalgas Tanayim, which didn't really pan out. But we did come up with something very interesting. We know that a nether has to be Nitfas, but Dabah another. So an Oil and a Shlam certainly qualified. The nether creates these things. Chatas v'ashem, even though they're obligatory, they're chayva, but the actual behema was designated by will, by choice. That also qualifies. Bechor, that's tricky. On the one hand, it's Kaddish from birth. That's why Rabbi Yudah says it's not uh, considered davar hanadar. Rabbi Yaakov says, well, since there's a mitzvah to add Kedusha by way of Kedusha's peh, it also qualifies as davar hanadar. We went through many cases in the Gemara. Um, and the main points were, well, first you have to say the chaf whenever you reference something. Rabbi Yudah says, yes, Rameir says no. Uh, we also learned about Rameir's chiddush, that likor ben le'echalach would constitute, even though it perhaps it's a double negative. No. Likor ben le'echalach means it's a carbon, therefore I can't eat it. We learned about homin uh, ha That doesn't work because... It's perhaps a reference to the chaye of the animal, which is not a davar hanadur. We learned that a fellow can make his speech asr, provided he uh, makes reference to a specific, you know, chayf, it's a limb, which produces that activity. And we concluded with uh, several examples of permissible in the because they failed to make reference to a davar hanadur. Be well and much aslacha.